we mentioned at one of our other meetings, um, we're very pleased to have Marge Levgren and Dick Levgren here. And just to refresh your memory on March the 1st, when the helicopter crash took place, why um, David lost his life, but then as he was being lifted, his uh, body was um, thrown or still in, is still in Vietnam. And in my opinion, I feel like that they come with our reunions to relate to their son David through us. And um, I served with David and I remember him. Um, I remember things that I kind of remember about him is he got a lot of letters from a lot of ladies. <laughs> and uh, so he was very friendly there and very, apparently very friendly back home. And he let me read some of those letters and I really appreciated that. <laughs> And I'm kind of glad Jan's gone to the ball game tonight, so she's not here to hear that. <laughs> but uh, David was just a joy to, sh to serve with. Um, as you all have heard me say, my memory of Vietnam is reflected through my brother, Jason Wright. And so we asked Jason to, if he would to talk about that, uh, that day, March 1st. You know, on March 1st, we had a, a tragedy that happened to Delta Fun Inn. And 3rd uh, Platoon lost five of their troops and two survived. 174th Aviation lost two gunners and the two pilots. So we were lucky to come out and have those two guys uh, Hodge and Bickers uh, to survive this. We all kind of, it was four or five that got uh, lost their life in that chopper and they were very close. Uh, we'd been there about three months and uh, Good and Gross and Lovren and uh, Gaines and Clark uh, were the five that died that day. And, uh, you know, he was, Dave Lovgren was smart. Uh, he was brave. And he was very, very friendly. But during that period of time, for a couple of months there, we was strung out uh, running platoon patrols and that kind of thing. And we didn't have a lot of time just to get together and and talk to one another, you know, and get to know one another. But those five, they knew each other. Uh, they'd been there together since uh, we got over there in November. And, uh, oh, I don't know how, if I did, I would bring his body home in about four days and present it to his family. But we hadn't been able to find it. I've been uh, in correspondence with several people that was in the search and we just hadn't accomplished anything. But uh, I won't let Miss Lovegren know if we, we hadn't forgot it. And we're gonna continue to look as long as we can get somebody to look. And uh, I just hope and pray that something will come along and, and give her some uh, closure to this thing. And you know, it's pretty bad. We all here together that made it. And I pray for those that lost their life. Uh, First Sergeant Erskine Wade, he would talk to us like we were his children. And he would uh, kind of blame himself a lot of times uh, because we lost some people. But he was a good first sergeant. He was a great leader. He was a great motivator. And uh, he really took it to heart when he lost somebody. 
So, I just like for everybody to keep their prayers going for David and uh, his brother, Mrs. Logan, and uh, I know his dad's done passed on, but uh, I, I still see everybody that we left over just like they were here today. It's so real. And it's so sad that that had to happen to quite a few guys, you know. But I'm going to keep on praying for him, and I hope the day will come, you know, when we can get all get some closure there. We lost some good men over there. And if they was getting the worst ones, I'd been one of the first ones, I guess, that got heated over there. <laughs> you know, it, it's just that kind of thing. We uh, Sometimes some guys got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. We took good care of everybody as we could. You know, the man in front, he had to watch, and the man behind, he had to watch him. And uh, we missed a lot of booby traps and things by doing that. I know Bill Power there, he got really messed up. And my prayers have been with Bill all these years. And I, I'd like to thank Linda for taking care of him so well. Uh, you know, she could have trained him off a few years ago. <laughs> But they, they've been in love for several years. Yeah. We've been married for 46 years. Uh, yeah. We were married as soon as she graduated high school. Good. Me and James have been married 47. And uh, I'd been married a year when I got drafted. And uh, I think more of her now than I did then because I thought I could get me just about anybody I wanted. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, we wanted him to kind of give you an update on that and then see where you can help with that. I'm the uh, recovery team that uh, first went out to the hilltop uh, right after the helicopter crash. And until a few reunions ago, uh, it had just not been a topic that was on my mind. And since then, it's been something that I think about almost daily as we start reliving some of those, uh, some of those moments. About a day before we left, I got a call from uh, Lieutenant Colonel Todd Kelly, who's in an office called the DPMO office. And that's the group of people in Washington, D.C. that search for our MIAs. I've talked with Colonel Kelly, and I've talked with another civilian volunteer who is also trying to do some investigation in doing a recovery of uh, David Lundgren. A gentleman named Michael McDonald Lowe, who was an officer with the America L Division. Uh, for those of you who were a part of the recovery team or were there on a hilltop or if you have pertinent information, I have a limited number of copies of email addresses and phone numbers for these people. And I'd appreciate if you'd see me, and I'll be glad to give a copy of that information to you. I don't want to release your information to anyone without your permission, so I'd rather that you contact them. Please see me. I can get you in, uh, numbers where you can get in touch with them. The more information they have, the more likely it is that they're going to continue to press on with this search, and hopefully at some point we'll bring some kind of closure to this issue. So please see me for the uh, uh, information. Thank you. Some of you knew my brother David. Uh, he got me going. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Anyway, he was there in November of uh, 68, killed March 1st, 69. Mother and David Lovren's mother, Marge, from Portland, Oregon, that they come to be with us. So we're so honored that they come. We'd also ask uh, Joe Lupo if he would uh, share, share some memories of that day. You know, whenever I have to talk about David, I'm always at a loss. 
And the reason I'm at a loss is because uh, my position up on that hill that day had nothing to do with the third platoon. I never met David until that day because I was the one who found his body at the bottom of the hill. But since that day, a relationship did develop, and that is between his family and his mother. I spent many hours and even years thinking about David and how we could find him, how we could get him back. So tonight, I want to tell you this, I want to renew our commitment. That is, everyone here from Delta Company, everyone who was up on that hill that day, that had anything to do with it, I want to renew our commitment to continue to look into where David is. There are people now, I understand, that would like to renew the search, and they're going to base it on information that we can give them. I want you to know that we're going to do everything we can to get that information to them and try and make this search successful. I know that up to now, the searches haven't really produced anything that's very frustrating. I tried many times to put myself in Mrs. Lovegreen's place. And that is a mother who sends away her son to war and never hears from them again. It's an intolerable place to be for the last 40 something years. But she's withstood it like a rocket Gibraltar. And I have a lot of admiration for her and her family because of it. So again, I want to renew our commitment to continue to look and exhaust everything that we possibly can to bring David back home. Thank you. I'm kind of one of them guys that once I get started, I can't shut up sometimes, so I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, as far as information on David's case, I'm kind of the guy in the family that carries the torch. Uh, I go to <coughs> excuse me, all the government briefings. Uh, this year it was either a choice of going to D.C. to a briefing or coming here. I couldn't do both. So next year I'll be going to D.C. for the family briefings which they pay for two airline tickets for, for two family members to go. Um, so as far as any information, if anybody has anything, I have the information that Cliff uh, just mentioned. He gave that to me the other night. You're welcome to email me at any time if you have any information I'll pass along. Uh, very easy email address is just my name, dick at lovegrin.com. Uh, I've owned that domain for many years and will until the day I die. So um, you're more than welcome to contact me. If for any reason I stay pretty heavily involved in the POWMI issue, I keep up with all the statistics on what's going on in the world as far as recoveries. So if I can pass any of that information on to you if you need it as far as who's been recovered, uh, how many, how much. Um, actually, I looked up the stats out of about almost 3,000 that were missing from the Southeast Asia conflict. Uh, they recovered about 1,600 of those so far. So they're doing some good work. And of course that's branched out to include uh, World War II in Korea, just from the Vietnam effort. So um, it's a two-way door. If you got something for me, I'm willing to take it. If I can give something to you, I'm willing to give it. So thanks.